How's it going everybody? It's Rosine here for Astrophotography and in today's video it's the night sky in August, the 8th month of the calendar year in case you needed me to tell you that. So this series I go on about a curated list of deep sky objects between galaxies, nebulae and all those good things of a variety of focal lengths with equivalents on the side. I also talk about any planets, events, lunar phases and all that good stuff. So actually in August we have a lot to cover, there's a lot going on so we're going to dive straight into it. We're going to start with deep sky objects because that is what I am most familiar with as an astrophotographer, that's what I do. And we're going to begin with 20 millimeters. so again this is camera sensors, camera frames, on star trackers is what I'm thinking of. So at 20 millimeters, I'm actually going to be recommending a variety of targets again because it's again it's a wide field of view similar to last month how I was recommending nightscape photography. This is kind of along the same vein. So this is going to be Cassiopeia, Cepheus, La Certa, Cygnus and the Milky Way all in one frame because all these constellations run through the core of the Milky Way there and if you get all of these with long enough exposures, I mean, think about it. You've got you've got constellations in there like Cygnus, which are brimming with nebulosity. You've got the um, North American nebula in there. You've got the uh, Veil remnants in there, and in Cassiopeia, you've also obviously got the Heart and Soul nebulas and all these other areas. So you could actually make a really nice photo with some very deep reds in there, and I'm very interested to see how that turns out. So 20 millimeters. That's my recommendation for this month. At 200 millimeters, I believe I've mentioned the Elephant's Trunk Nebula before in this series earlier on, but don't worry because at 200 millimeters, you can also get what is known as the Flying Bat Nebula in there as well. So you'll put the Elephant's Trunk in one corner and the Flying Bat will be there also. What an amazing name for a nebula. I know, right? So again, these are emission-based nebulas. We're going to be talking RGB, we're going to be talking multi narrowband filters, and we're going to be talking narrowband filters in general. So, 200 millimeters, very portable setup this would be. So, you could go out to those nice dark sky sites, sync all that integration time, and get a very nice photo. 200 millimeters, Elephant Strunk Nebula, and a Flying Bat Nebula. I can't get over that name. Just, just have this little vision of this background in there. I can't get over it. At 400 to 500 millimeters, I'm going to be recommending the Heart Nebula. Um, I'm not sure if I've already recommended this one before. Most most likely have. I like the Heart Nebula. I did my best to avoid repeats as much as I can, but I'm always going to fall back on some kind of repeats here and there. The Heart Nebula is a gorgeous nebula anyway, though. And if you want to orientate it in portrait mode, then think about it. Make a Valentine's card out of it. Get it printed. Make a Valentine's card out of it, or you know, a card or a poster for a loved one. Bit cheesy, but you know, who doesn't want a heart from space? I would. At 700 to 800 millimeters now, because the season is getting deeper in there, we're going over to the constellation of Andromeda. But wait, I'm not recommending the Andromeda galaxy, as you might have guessed from this semi deep field of view. I'm actually going to be recommending M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. The Triangulum Galaxy being a gorgeous face on a massive. Uh, the Triangulum Galaxy being a gorgeous face-on galaxy with plenty, plenty of room for HARGB imaging to really make those nebulous regions pop out. The Triangulum Galaxy being one of my favorite galaxies out there, so <laughs> I'm slightly biased here. It's my list and I'm recommending it. So seven to 800 millimeters, Triangulum Galaxy. At 1000 millimeters, I'm gonna be recommending a set of targets that really get overlooked a lot of the time clusters star clusters in this case it is coldwell 10 the lawnmower cluster where they get these names from beats me either way the lawnmower cluster at this kind of resolution and these kind of focal lengths is going to be a very beautiful jewel of stars you do nice exposures on it get those really deep star colors going they look phenomenal so 1000 millimeters could give some star clusters some love they're calling out for it again with these names at 1500 millimeters, we've actually got some galaxies still going, which is pretty interesting because we're normally out of galaxy season by now. This is the Deerlick group and Stevens Quintet. So the Deerlick and Stevens Quintet are like, well, the Quintet is a group of galaxies, very small, tightly wad galaxies, uh, but they look very nice indeed from very deep blues in there from the looks of things. And at 1500 millimeters, you could frame both of them up and get a very nice shot of them. So that's what I'm recommending. Go lick some deers for Stephen. 
And at 2000 millimeters, those really long focal lengths, we're gonna be looking at NGC 7640. Now this is a very pretty side on Galaxy. It looks very nice. Um, I don't know how I stumbled across this one in my research, but there you go. I found it, I'm recommending it. It looks beautiful. I really hope you get to sink some time onto this target and do it some real justice, because it looks like a very nice galaxy. Okay, we're going into plants now. And just like last month, those same plants are out. They're just getting better and better, really, aren't they? We've got Saturn, we've got Jupiter, and we've got Neptune again. So Jupiter being bigger than Saturn, Saturn being further away, and Neptune being the furthest of the lot of them, depending on your equipment and what kind of camera sensors and focal lengths you're rocking, and what kind of barlows and seeing you've got, I don't know which one you're gonna target. If I was gonna choose one, I'd probably go for Jupiter. I think that's one of my favorite planets. Because yeah, I always get mixed up. Do I want do I wanna do I wanna put my hat in for Saturn or hat in for Jupiter as my favorite planet? I digress. Those are the three targets and those three planets up at this time of the year. Uh, I really wanna see some Neptune photos. If you've got the equipment for Neptune, show me. Events, we have some more events going on this month. I'm gonna to have to consult my paperwork, so please. Excuse me. During August, we've got a few events going on as well. On the 2nd of August, Saturn is actually at opposition, which I believe means this is the best time to photograph the ringed planet. So going back to what I said earlier about how Saturn's up, look, it's probably at the best time opposition on the 2nd of August. So once you finish shooting and photographing Saturn at opposition, by the time we get to August 20th, Jupiter is now opposition. So, you know, banging both of these two major gas giants out, why not? So from again, August the 20th, Jupiter will be at opposition, one of the best times to photograph planets. If I'm wrong on that, please correct me down below. And on August the 22nd, if you have 200 millimeter optics, you can actually get the moon and Jupiter in one field of view. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't think they're actually occluding each other because that would make bigger news. But again, 200 millimeters, getting the moon and Jupiter, and I, you might actually get some Jupiter moons at that focal length as well. I'm not entirely sure. But hey, why don't you give that a photograph as well? Right, on to August meteor showers. I told you August was a busy month. Very good for us astrophotographers. August the 12th is the peak of the Persid meteor shower. And also because of the lunar phases at this point, the moon shouldn't actually interfere with the meteor shower. So August the 12th, Persid meteor shower. Okay, going on about moons messing up meteor showers, here are the lunar phases for this month. The new moon falls on the 8th of August. The first quarter is on the 15th of August. Again, so there you go, you're between new moon and first quarter for the peak meteor shower. The full moon is the 22nd of August, and that is the sturgeon moon. And last quarter is the 30th of August. So this full moon gets its name after the sturgeon fish. Way back when, the Native Americans called it the sturgeon moon because the fish become abundant at this time of the year. And that's it, that is the nice guy in August all wrapped up. Whew, there was a lot to cover. Hope you've enjoyed my recommendations. I hope you take some action or some, some inspiration from them. And let me know of your results and comments down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Drop your comments down below for any suggestions and consider subscribing for more monthly videos of The Night Sky. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you have a clear skies. Keep looking up, keep the cameras clicking. I'll see you later.